She's got wide gaps, roof peaks, inner peaks, recessed window peaks, starts off a 2x1 and builds up to a compact fort with all the necessary utilities to thrive and fend off the wildest online raids. Welcome to another video friends, today I'm very excited to show you my favorite base design, the Sanctuary. Before we start, I'd like to mention that this base is heavily inspired by Evil Worsts the Concord. However, over the years, I've brought so many changes to the design that I might as well call it my own. Also, I'd like to put a disclaimer, this base is geared toward defending an online raid. In case of an offline, the cheapest way into TC is only 30 rockets. All right now, without further ado, let's get into it. Start by building a 2x1 with a triangle on the short end. Upgrade the door frame to wood and the rest to stone. Place the TC and make the double door open toward the single door to create a first airlock. In this starter unit, you should be able to place two large boxes, three furnaces, a tier 1 workbench, a barbecue with a small box, and up to four sleeping bags. If you judge necessary, add a triangle airlock. However, if you do so, unless Beachills is trying to deep on you, try and keep the door frames and the triangle ceiling wood to make it easier on yourself to soft side when we'll expand later on. Add a shelf to the main TC compartment like this. Now you have room for two more large boxes and a campfire. You have now completed the starter unit. This could easily carry you all the way to tier 2, but you're only three doors to TC. So if you upset the neighborhood, you're going to want to expand. First, honeycomb the core. Then reproduce the core design on the first floor. Both triangles will become jump ups. Expand to the locker floor like this. If you have the resources, this is a good time to build the second floor honeycomb. Build your first locker room like this. Place two double doors opening inward. You can now soft side the airlock door frames and the triangle seal. Replace two sleeping bags in the core and the two others on the first floor. You can now remodel the core to add a research table and a large box and an extra furnace. On the first floor, upgrading the double door frame to sheet metal will allow you to place four large boxes like this. When we have garage door, we will turn this into shot seven box loot room. Add a repair bench, two small boxes, and replace the barbecue and small box. Now, at this point, even if you've had a rough time and you're still only tier one, you can actually place two beds and a makeshift large small box locker on the locker floor to help you with PvP. Build up the chutes and the jump up to the top floor like this. Until you have ladders researched, you can access the base with a simple triangle stairs jump up. When you have ladders, close up the honeycomb like this. Line up the last bar of the ladder with the ceiling to place it perfectly. Place two double doors opening toward the chutes to create additional airlocks. You can now place two more beds. Congratulations, you have now completed your core. This is a very functional and defendable base that could carry you all the way through the wipe if you wanted to. Building up that much will make you stand out, so I hope that you have reached at least tier 2 at that point. However, just know that a compound only requires tier 1, so if you feel the need to throw down an early compound, this is how you do it. Start by placing the inner peak's external TCs. To do so, build a triangle foundation off the short edge of your honeycomb. Home two by one. Then two squares to the side, nine squares straight, two squares back, six triangles back, one square, eight triangles, one square, one triangle. Now at this point you can keep it like that if you want, but I personally prefer more compact compounds because they're more economic. To do so, remove everything past the four triangle foundations of the first square, add a square and six triangles. Build your TC compartment like this, with the door facing away from the base. Eventually, we will add triangle window frames when we have them researched. Add double door frames on the triangles to prevent raiders from disconnecting your externals by soft-siding the foundations with jackhammers. Reproduce the same on the opposite side of the base. Now we're going to place the wide gaps external TCs. Off the long side of the honeycomb 2x1, place a square foundation and upgrade it. Then place three squares and a triangle, remove the squares, build all the way back using triangles. Remove everything except the last triangle, build a square, four triangles, one square, then six triangles. Build the same TC compartments and add double door frames on the triangle foundations. Reproduce the same on the opposite side of the base. Build the compound airlocks like so. 
Single doors make it cheaper and also funnel traffic in and out of the compound, making it easier to defend. Add barricades using this method so they stick out and make it more difficult to ladder up in the compound. However, if you're against alone in Tokyo, you can just abandon all hope. Closing up the compound costs 16 walls, which is 24,000 woods, or only 7.2 stone nodes if you trade it for wood at outpost, which I find very reasonable, even for a solo. Once you have garage door research, craft 7. Place them in your TC compartment, core jump up, first floor jump ups and loop room, and the top floor jump up. These will replace most of your double sheet doors, which we will be reusing later on in the build. This will also allow you to turn the first floor loot room into shot 7 box loot room, which in my opinion is the best loot room in the game. If you don't know how to do the shot 7 box loot room, this is how you do it. You might need to temporarily pick up bags. Bring a triangle shelf into the loot room like this. Then place the first box in the middle of the triangles and this will allow you to perfectly place the back box, which is the most difficult one. Pick up the right box and replace it here. You can now safely place the last box. Now if you have garage door, that probably means that you have embrasures researched as well. So this would be a good time to further secure your compound. Now let's build the inner, outer and wide gap peaks. First, let's build the foundation footprint. Of the inner peaks TCs, that is the ones that end with a triangle, build a triangle foundation followed by a square, triangle, square and another triangle. Repeat on the other side of the base. Remove the squares and upgrade the triangles. Place a double door frame on both ends and the short side of the original 2x1. Close everything up with three levels of walls. Build double door frames to close up these gaps. These need to remain stone because it has the biggest hitbox. Place double sheet doors to close off the peaks. Up top, build another locker room like this, then build the shooting floor airlock. I recommend placing a garage door here to help with the jump up over the beds. You should also place garage doors in these two spots to hide your beds from the windows looking into the shooting floor. Using the peak door frames you placed earlier, build a recessed window peak like this and reproduce the same on the opposite side of the base. Then build your inner peaks like this. Remember to keep the overlapping ceilings stone because if you get raided and your walls get messed up, this will ensure you can bring back the base to its pristine state. Now, let's take care of the wide gap peaks. These are very overpowered and I'm very happy to have been able to incorporate them into such a compact base design. Build two triangles off each side of this square. Delete the unnecessary triangles. Then build three levels of double door frames. Complete the wide gap up top. Now that your peaks are complete, you want to build up the shooting floor to ensure they can't be used against you. Place half wall elevated window frames in these four spots. These ones need to be rotated inwards. Surround the rest of the shooting floor with window frames. Build a roof ramp here and place a wall on each side. Once you place the ceilings, the walls will come all the way up. You can now complete the jump up like this. Reproduce the same on the opposite side of the base. Now place a square ceiling on every remaining side of the core roof and close everything up with triangles. Build the roof peaks of the wide gap like this. Replicate this design on the opposite side of the base. Place four double doors and four single doors opening outwards in these spots to close off the peaks. Cover every window with vertical metal embrasures. You might have to build double door frame supports in these four spots. This should give you the stability needed to close off the wide gap peaks. Do the same for the other wide gap. Attach a square roof to each square ceiling coming off the core, then fill the rest with triangle roofs. I particularly love all the free real estate that these give you. 
Your roof is now complete and defendable, despite not having turrets yet. This is the perfect place for a heli garage and some drone shops. In this example, I'm adding four, but you can do anything you want here. Really. You could have fewer vending machines and keep it all open to store more meat. Also, if you put a lot of loot in your shops, I would recommend using more garage doors and upgrading the ceilings to metal to deter top-down shop brackets. Now let's add airlocks to the inner piece. If you have the resources, you should definitely section them as well. This is a great opportunity to use your leftover double sheet doors. You can also add fences to slow down raiders by preventing them from easily boosting over these doors. When it comes to sectioning peaks, you probably noticed that I prioritized the shooting floor earlier because this is literally the first thing that raiders will try and take control of. The next step consists in wiring up a shit ton of turrets to help you defend against bigger raids. Build windmill towers on both ends of the base. Rotate the windmills three times to have them face you. In each of the bedroom triangles, place a large battery, a root combiner, a switch, ideally a smart switch if you have it researched, and six electrical branches. The combined root output goes into the battery, which goes into the switch, which then goes into each electrical branch. You'll want to go power out, power in every time, and branch out 10 current to each turret. I like to have one turret guarding each level of the core, one guarding the chutes and one guarding the shooting floor airlocks. Place two inner inner peaks in front of the chute doors. Place two turrets guarding the roof ramps like this, then four turrets guarding the compound, your large furnaces and oil refineries. Congratulations, your base is now pretty much complete. But wait, there's more! Up until now, I built everything out of stone. But if you made it here, I sure hope you've made some big plays, dude. Ideally, you'll want to upgrade your core to HQM and the core honeycomb to sheet metal as soon as you can. Whenever you make it to tier 3, replace the tier 2 in your core. When you have large furnaces, you can place them in the compound. Oil refineries can fit in the peaks and help with jumps if you built in a scuffed spot. At this point, you probably don't need that furnace compartment in the core anymore, so you can soft side the window frame and replace it with an armored wall. If you need more loot room, you can add many small boxes in the core and a wheel jump triangle loot room above this jumper. Upgrade your electrical rooms to metal as well, because if the raiders get to it, your turrets will go offline and it's pretty much GG's at that. In the inner peaks, upgrade the square foundation and wall of the turrets and these four triangles to sheet metal to prevent offliners to soft side in your peaks with jackhammers. Add double door frames to the compound airlocks. They can be soft sided and give you more cover on the side when open. You should also remember to better protect your externals because now they're half of your base. Upgrade the TC triangle compartment to sheet metal and add a reinforced metal window for added protection. Now, the reason why we have doors facing this way on the externals is so that you can add extra modules to the base. Remember that you can build these as early as you want to. So let's say for example, you are tier two, but you don't have a compound yet, a large furnace base could save you a lot of wood farming. When building, remember to place the furnace before the seedings, otherwise you're gonna have a bad time. With the new camper module that was just added to the game, it is safe to say that cars are going to become more and more important in Rust. So this is how you add a car garage to the base. You could also build a horse base, external locker rooms, drop box pods, or anything you want really. But anyway, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. I put a lot of effort into it, so if you want to support me, I would really appreciate if you leave a like. It does help a lot more than you think. If you made it here, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.